Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Hope you're having a great Monday. We have a show full of the hottest topics everyone's talking about. Lania's out today, but Brittany is here to step in for her, and she's been doing such a great job over the last few weeks. So welcome back, Brittany, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. <laughs> want to remind you all over social media, Facebook, X, uh, TikTok, and of course, our official website, the StephenKnightShow.com. Rather watch us go on our YouTube channel, Stephen Knight Show. And you can get our merch at our website, of course. Please make sure you register to vote. This thing is getting crazy, and it's and it's a big election coming up. So make sure that you are registered. And today is President's Day. Happy President's Day, a.k.a. Barack Obama Day. Uh, before we get into our Black History Month, this is Black History. I mean, he was the first um, African-American um, president. And so I was listening to another show book. Chike, do you remember that day that he was his inauguration, the first one? Um, and well, like, what were your thoughts? Do you remember what you were doing at that time? Uh, somewhere crying, right. I, I'm sure. Probably uh, somewhere shedding a tear or two. Um, because I realized, okay, let me back up a little bit. I, I grew up in my grandmom's house with a picture of Martin Luther King on the mantle. Mm -hmm. Now, me being a child, I did not know that Martin Luther King was not related to us <laughs> because <laughs> he was up there with the rest of the family folks, right? right? Mm -hmm. And before anyone explained to me who Martin Luther King was, I knew his reverence in our lives because my grandmom had him on the mantle. Yeah. And I remember having thoughts about that with Barack Obama being, you know, as you know, being inaugurated and as our president. Yeah. And I'm thinking I'm living through history, you know, and then now I go into up my family members' home and there's a picture of Barack Obama <laughs> amidst all the family photos. So I kind of thought about that, you know, that man's a part of our family and um, you know, a historical figure at this point. So mm -hmm. the tears definitely came from knowing that I was living through a significant part of history. Yeah. I remember um, when he was running, when this one he was going for the nomination against Hillary. I remember I was talking to my mom on the phone. She said, they're not going to let that black man win. They're not going to let him win. <laughs> and, and she was dead serious. She didn't, she couldn't see it. Um, but I remember I was watching the inauguration. No, I think this was the, actually the night of the, when they were uh, waiting for the electoral college vote. And one of my friends was over, could care less about politics. I said, you know, you, you can't go. You can't go. And <laughs> when he won, one of my other homeboys, who's kind of hard, he called me crying. Couldn't believe it. Could not believe that um, a black man was our president. And mm -hmm. sc scandal free eight years in office. And to this day, still scandal free. Brittany, what do you remember about that time? Um, that, what year was it, first of all? I, yeah, I had just graduated high school, maybe like three years before that and so I was in college mm -hmm. and so I do that was the big first presidential election that we were Basically, voting for yeah. after graduating high school and being able to graduate or being able to vote and stuff like that so that was a big deal for us because it was the first election that was the mm -hmm. president election that we could vote in yeah for a black man and you know while I am not related to MLK like CK here <laughs> you know I've <laughs> my grandfather and my my dad's side of the family is from Detroit so they definitely you know like uh, my grandfather was a DJ at Motown mm -hmm. so we all the like Nat King Coles and all the Barry Gordy's on the wall yeah. and stuff so black history was definitely instilled in my upbringing I went to a predominantly black um, private school so you know it was still a big deal for me because of how far we come my um grandmother is half white and half black so I grew up hearing her stories how like in the north like when they were by the bus she couldn't sit with her mom mm. so for us to, like that was a huge deal so yeah yeah and I had an aunt who actually marched with um with um Martin Luther King it's funny though um because my great aunt because she passed away before I was born but my great aunt her sister she would tell me the stories because she she they asked her to be the first um teacher in Virginia to um in that area to be go to the 
um, integrated schools and she didn't want to do it. <laughs> she did not want to do it. <laughs> and she said that, um, you know, here, her sister was the one March of Martin Luther King and all that. And she said her, she didn't want no parts of it. She wanted no drama. She said one time she was on the bus because she lived in D.C. a long time and they didn't make you sit in the back of the bus. But when she went to Virginia, she was just got on the bus normal. And the bus driver said, be a girl inward and get to the back. And she happened to look out the window, saw someone being arrested. She said she got up quick, went to the back of that bus, <laughs> you know, but um, it's interesting that there are differences, you know, but um, but definitely a time in history, definitely a time in history. Um, and shout out to Michelle Obama, too, that that family they made us proud. But Black History Month. So today we're highlighting Matthew Mack Robinson. He's the older brother of baseball legend Jackie Robinson, who won a silver medal in 1936 Summer Olympics. He finished in 0.4 seconds behind Jesse Owens. So salute to uh, Mac Robinson. All right. So question of the day. If you could instantly, instantly become an expert in something, what would it be? Brittany. Oh, okay. That's hard. If I could instantly become an expert in something, it would be like finance, like, or something where like, everything I touch turns to gold. Like, you know, like, it would be something like that, like, where if I just be like, oh, I want to try my hand at that, like, it would be easy for mm -hmm. me to just, like, learn anything and make it a money maker for me. Like, I would love that. Yeah. What about you, Chica? I would say human behavior. Mm. And then I would tour around the world, just fixing everybody as I go around to the different <laughs> countries and working on everybody. <laughs> I, I would say the same thing about finances. I wish I was an expert when it came to finances overall. I'm not. <laughs> but tweet us at home or go on X, let us know. If you could instantly become an expert in something, what would it be? All right, so Chris Brown, he is Dragon Frito-Lay brand Ruffles. Um, after the company released a statement claiming that they had no part in him being uninvited to the NBA All-Star Celebrity Game. So uh, Saturday, uh, Chris Brown, um, he was he's tired of his past being weaponized against him for the most part. Um, despite his taking accountability, facing consequences and turning a new leaf and being forgiven for his past and, uh, transgressions dating back to 20, 2009, excuse me, Brown continues to be indirectly or directly punished. Uh, the latest instance of such, Brown revealed that he was invited to play in the 2024 NBA All-Star Celebrity Game, but noted that he wouldn't be able to play anymore after the league uh, allegedly uninvited him. Um, he actually shared a screenshot on his Instagram story of the email that was sent to him and his team. He said He said, I was asked to be an NBA to play. I was asked by the NBA to play in the All-Star Game this year only for them to call later and say they couldn't do it because of their sponsors, like Ruffles. At this point, I'm sick of people bothering me and I'm tired of living in the effing past. And the RB superstar went on to say, I posted the email so y'all could see the NBA was trying to get me to come sit courtside, not effing happening. In his final IG story, he added, I'm only going where I'm appreciated. Now, once Brown blasted NBA and Ruffles, the latter company released a statement trying to remove all of the uh, all of the heat off of them. Uh, they emailed Hollywood Unlocks article. I'm sorry. They emailed in an email regarding Hollywood Unlock. That's the blog article. Um, a representative wrote, "Reaching out on behalf of Ruffles in response to your article in Hollywood Unlocked on Chris Brown's social media post regarding the NBA All-Star Celebrity Game. They pretty much said they had nothing to do with who was booked and they um, didn't have visibility. Well, Chris Brown took to social media and said they were just trying to clear up their name, but they know exactly what they did and he doesn't need to chase clout because that's not what he does um, and pretty much called him cowards. So, uh, TK, what are your thoughts? I mean, Brianna's now married with two kids well they're not married are they no no but she's she's partnered with two kids she's definitely moved on um why is he still being held for something that stemmed from 2008 2009 so i'm gonna say that the issues surrounding chris brown aren't just rihanna based 
that's something that we know about. Mm -hmm. But if you remember, uh, Mr. Brown has had several incidents in other aspects of entertainment, which his uh, demeanor was called into question. Um, he has been in, uh, let's see, one thing that I remember in the press was Good Morning America. He kind of went off one morning and damaged some stuff there and stormed out. Uh, there was a couple of other things like backstage fights at other places. So it's not, it's not just Rihanna focused. Um, <clears throat> however, and I, I, I think I took a post and I put it up in one of my stories, uh, maybe on my conversations page that we actually need to talk about this as a community because cancer culture is real. However, in real life and people doing work on themselves, at some point, forgiveness has to happen in order for you to be healthy, right? So it gets to this point, who's responsible? I would hold Mr. Brown responsible because this is his reputation, this is his career. You should never be in a situation to beg people to accept you. You should go where you're wanted, right? Maybe he should have private conversations with somebody like a Janet Jackson. Whereas though you get blackballed or you get ostracized and you use your own bootstraps to build yourself back up. Maybe Chris Brown needs to do projects and do more public uh, appearances that help bolster the image that he would like to have as opposed to the one he had. Um, I'm not saying that it's right that people constantly kick him out of things. But if people, if that's the last thing that people know about you, then you have to change their perception of you. Yeah. That's just where I'm coming from. I think it was weird in this case because he was actually invited to come play. And then they... So, so let me explain that. Chris Brown can play ball. He's a decent ball player. I'm sure the, the, the team wanted him there. I'm sure they wanted him there. However, when it comes to the money, when it comes to the image, there's powers that be. Again, I think I said this last week. Why do we keep on begging these people to let us be on stages where they really don't want us? Why? Mm -hmm. He shouldn't want to be there if they don't want him there. And I'm sure some people did want him there. Chris Brown is a big celebrity. People don't mention it because of his reputation, but Chris Brown sells millions. Still, yeah. even with the reputation, he sells millions. He yeah. doesn't get the airplay that he probably should get, but the fans still love his music. Right. So he is viable in a certain aspect of the, you know, the public. He just has to work on that image to be accepted in those doors where those doors are closed. Mm -hmm. Brittany, what are your thoughts on this? I definitely hear what Chike says. I think that Chris Brown does have to... I think he secluded himself a lot to work on himself to where he hasn't shown that he's done the work on himself now. Like I do think he needs to do more out in public to show that he has grown. Cause like, like Chike said, that's the last we remember. And so it's just like, but I don't feel like he should be still held to something he did in his twenties. Like Rihanna's moved on and had kids. He's moved on and had several relationships with kids. Like, um, it's time to move on, and I don't think it's fair that we're still, you know, holding him accountable to a temper he had when he was younger, which, of course, it wasn't right, but I do think that he tends to be very recluse and, like, in his house and in his own little world and in art and stuff like that, and I do think that, like he said, you got to show people the growth that you've had if you've really done the work on yourself so that they can see the new you. I do think that um, Ruffles is backtracking. I think that they definitely pulled out. I don't see why Chris Brown would lie on them. I think American Music Awards was wrong for that. They had that man practicing and put a whole routine mm -hmm. together. Yeah, pulled out of the and I think that all of them are just really wrong with how he doing them because I do think he is a legend in his own right. Like I do think that he is super talented at sports, art, everything he does is amazing. I um I don't think it's fair for them to keep playing with that man like that and then bringing that back up, especially when the NBA and NFL have a horrible history with domestic violence, mm -hmm. uh, tempers, drugs, guns. Yep. They've 
gang members in there. Javaris Crittenden. It was uh, Gilbert Arenas. You know, look at uh, the other the, the tall dude that just got suspended for fighting in every oh, time yeah. he played uh -huh. basketball. I Pretty mean, much. like they got. Yeah, got all these people in there with bad tempers, and y'all can't let Chris Brown play. Like, it, it's the pot calling the kettle for me. You know what I'm saying? He's not the only one I, out there that's <laughs> that's as. I have an RX though. I have an RX for Chris. This is my RX. Maybe in between musical projects, you get a documentary film crew together, and you film yourself behind the scenes, like uh, I mean, a hard, cold, in depth behind the scenes, true you, cry a little bit, whimper a little bit, show you being loving to your children a little bit, show you being loving to your fans a little bit, and maybe people will see a different side of you that they don't see from the regular. And dispel those myths and allegations that come up every time you get ready to release an album. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here for Chris. Come back. Like, I really want him yeah. to come go back to the golden boy that he was when he first came out and everybody loved him because he was all over everything at first. Everywhere. So I love to have Chris have a great comeback. And then he did the crying on the man in the mirror performance. And I thought that, that was gonna win them over. Yeah. Yeah. Hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's talented. He's from Virginia. So you know, but we do hope he um is able to pull it pull it around. I, I don't know. I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> well this is I hate the story here. So last week Mo Monique and her son Shalon took to social media several times to address the current status of the relationship. Mo's husband, Sidney Hicks, even stepped in at one point. Just when the family rift seemed to subside on social media, a video surfaced of Monique going in on Shalon. This time, the longtime actress was airing her thoughts out on the recent comedy show. In the viral clip, the comedian explained that she... Uh, that she's head on about addressing issues. So pretty much said that she has no problem apologizing if she made a mistake. But um, she is going to um, address something and she'll address it to your face. So she was telling the story how she was in the airport um, and she was told well, she was told that her son had made a video about her on TikTok. And really much it was in um, response to her interview with um, Shannon Sharp. And he really didn't say anything nasty about her. He just said that they're not really rebuilding a relationship. They're not really, you know, she's what she was telling Shannon Sharp was not really what's going on accurate. Um, but anyway, so he made that video, then Monique and Sydney made their video, and then he made a video responding to that. Well, so she was telling a story in her comedy show, because when I saw the headline, it, it sounded like she said, F that in, talking about her son. That's what the headline said. But she was on the show, she was on her, her, her um, show in New York, New Jersey. And she said that when she was in the airport, um, you know, knowing this video is out there, this older woman, elderly woman called her by a name. And she joked, she was like, I was like, ma'am, she's not, I'm still gonna be respectful, but I already knew what she was about to say. And so um, pretty much the woman said, I saw the video of your son. And she said, you know what I have to say? And, you know, money's playing on words, building up the story. She said, F that in, in word. And uh, she said, you know, when an elderly person tells you to F that N word, you, they mean it. And she said that she was 80 years old. She has a son who's 60 years old. And every time she doesn't do what he wants, he uh, brings up things that he, she did when he was 10 years old. F that N. And that's pretty much what she said in this joke. And so her son took to social media after the video uh, went viral. And he says, Satan be gone, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, in an animated voice. Then he um, posted a video. He wasn't visible. His face wasn't visible, but there were three sentences on, there were three sentences in white text on the screen. Dang, Ma, I still love you, though. Laughter will get me through, he wrote. He said, not on stage, though, LOL. It'd be like that sometimes, I guess. So my question is, she already admitted in the interview in 2020 um, that she was not, when she had him, she didn't want to be a mother. She didn't want to be a wife. She was chasing fame. She said that she was at all the award shows. She was on the, you know, doing the interviews because that's what she wanted. She always wanted to be famous. And she figured by, because she was providing for him, we have this big old house, we have this pool, we have this basketball courts. What you complaining for? You know what I mean? But she said, as a result, this was in 2020. She said, as a result, it there it came with a price in their relationship. 
Um, and so she's admitted to not being there for him. Um, but what do you what are your thoughts on them airing this on a line, uh, Brittany? Because she even released a, text messages. Text after he made his first video, she released text messages from a conversation they had two years ago where he was pretty much singing her praises. What are your thoughts? As a mother, I understand Monique's plight. Like you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like there's no manual to raising kids. You don't, you know, you could do everything right and they still feel like you missed the mark on something. And parenting is hard. Like there's no right or wrong way. Every kid is different. Like sometimes things happen and you have kids before you're actually ready and then it makes you grow up or you don't. And sometimes you need a village or you drop them off with your mom. It, you, it just takes a lot. I get that. But I do think like, I understand as a child, like what she's doing, posting the text messages, stuff online is so inappropriate. Like that stuff is at the end of the day, that's still your child. And I think that the vindication and stuff that she's doing with, um, Tyler Perry and D.L. Hughley is getting caught up and trying to get vindicated as a parent as well. And I know that that's hard too. It seems like both of them are in a really emotional space with trying to prove that they've done everything that they could. And so I think that she's way out of line for posting the text messages and she's way out of line for making that joke because it's still a sensitive space for him. He's a child. You know what I'm saying? Like I, as I have a teenage son and he drives me up a wall, but <laughs> I not see myself doing that to him because hurting him would hurt me at the end of the day like you know like and I had him young I had my son at 19 or 20 mm -hmm. I got pregnant so you know like it is hard but yeah. I at the end of the day we're family we're blood and eat regardless of whether we're talking today or whatever it's like you know that's between me and him and don't I'm not gonna put everybody in my business with me and him so I I get it I don't agree, Monique. I think that you're getting all of that mixed up with the D.L. Hughley and everybody else situation, and I don't think you need to go that hard with your child. So I'm not in support of it. Yeah. Chicken, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I see both sides. Um, I understand that Monique is in the throes of rebuilding her career and trying to put the pieces back together. And I understand why she is being in that petty space of posting everything because she is about showing receipts on her end because she's rebuilding. She right. wants our trust. She doesn't care about anything else but having our trust back with her and, and helping her rebuild her career. I get that. From Shalon's point of view, which is her son, um, one of the most difficult tasks as an adult who still has living parents, I guess even if they're not living, is to understand your parents to be human and understand where they're coming from as human beings and seeing them in that light as opposed to a parent. You know, Monique was a young mother who was thirsty for a career. He's also a comedian and a father. <laughs> and he, he went about talking about how he's doing things differently because he wants to be a father to his daughter. That's normally what happens. You do the opposite mm -hmm. thing that your parents did, trying to be a good parent yourself. Yeah. There's no right formula, just like Brittany said, to being a parent. You you kind of have to make it up as you go along and doing what's best for you and your child and your family. Mm -hmm. However, no one gets out unscathed. You can't tell me any human being that has not been affected directly by their parent. In some way, shape, or form, you get touched. They can overprotect you and you become useless to the world when you're overprotected. They could touch you too much and you become damaged, you know? So either way, right? I don't know. I just think that maybe, maybe Monique needs to pull hands back and leave it alone and just let him be. I know she made the statement on um, the Shay Shay show that she was there and ready when he was willing to come. And I've heard people say that the child shouldn't be the one with the action. The adult and the parent should be the one with the action because they're the adult and the parent. But mm -hmm. at this stage in the game, both of them are adults. And if he wants a relationship with his mother, then he needs to seek one out. And if she wants one with her son, she needs to seek it out. I hope they can mend it. I'm going to pray for them. But I understand both points of view. 
And to add to Jay's thing, like she said, like I heard that in the interview where she said that she's like hands off with it and he gonna have to seek her out. But when I saw the text messages, it looks like she very much is pursuing the relationship. Like she kept being like, hey, baby, good morning. Hey, baby, I love you. And I'm like, that's not hands off if you're really gonna let him come to you. Like if he really gonna come to you, you know, like you're not gonna be... And like, to, add to, to add to that, I think there's other ingredients involved, too, because she did raise other children outside of him. So then there's the jealousy quotient, which he did not admit to being jealous, but I'm sure that is there because those children had a piece of her that he didn't have. But understanding that she's in a different phase of life, she may have had some education, she may have had some epiphanies of her own at that point to be able to give to those children that she didn't give them. And understanding that, just like I said, looking at your parent as a human being, as opposed to your parent, some grace needs to be involved. Yeah. Hope they do get the help they need because I hate to see this, you know, um, Listen, every, time I, you her, every <laughs> time I see her, every time I see her and her husband behind that camera, I'm like, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so triggering. I... Here we go. <laughs> well, let's take a quick break. We're gonna talk about um Fanny Wells. She took went viral uh over the week uh, last week. And then we're gonna find out about a man who missed who was suing the lottery over a glitch. Right back after this. <laughs> 